along with just one topic. It's going to be um, a couple of different topics. I'm going to start off first, and I am going to, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the CCALIS resource guides for trustees. And um, I think you'll find those to be a, a wealth of information that's going to be really helpful to you in your work as trustees. And then there's also information on your librarians as well. Let me share my screen with you and take you there. That's what I want right there. Okay, you should be seeing the um, CKLS uh, website right now. That address is ckls.org. It's really the only thing you have to, to um, remember during my presentation because from this website, you can get to nearly everything. If you scroll down, you're gonna see here the Central Kansas Library System um, Live Guides. We've got two that are gonna be of particular in interest to trustees tonight. We have the um, archives of CKLS workshops. And um, most of our workshops we do record if they're on Zoom and we archive those on our YouTube channel. And then um, librarians and trustees can go watch those when it's convenient for them. The other thing we're gonna talk about, and I'll take you there right now, is the trustee training resources. As I said before, there's a lot of information here. Um, when we scroll down through the pages, you can see it's got different boxes for different things. Um, these are uh, just helpful things, of course. Um, a checklist to help you write um, policies and bylaws that meet your library's um, needs. The handbook, this takes you away to information on the, um, the director of the rec list of recommended policies that every library should have as a minimum, information on records retention. If you have a librarian that just started and you've got a closet bulging with records, um, it's best not to turn them loose on that, but to actually have your librarian call and CKLS will have someone come out for a day and help them determine what must be kept by law and what can be um, shredded or um, no longer needs to be kept. These are trustee forms and um, resources. We recommend that every library trustee receive a, a full and, and um, well-developed orientation. That's gonna look different from library to library, but this form here, this trustee orientation, it shows you what, as at a minimum, information your new library trustees should get. If you want your new trustees to come on to the board and be able to just jump right in, they need to have an orientation. And sometimes that's the library director that gives that orientation. And sometimes it's the board chair. And frequently, it's both. Um, one of the most important jobs for board is to evaluate your library director. This link here gives you all kinds of information on how to do that, um, what to avoid, and it gives you several different sample evaluation forms. I think you'll find if you poke around at this trustee training libguide or resource guide, our real goal is to give you all the tools you need to make your job easier. Now, we can't go to your monthly meetings for you, but we're going to give you tools on how to make your meetings run smoothly, um, how to write those policies, uh, just, just a wealth of information. And the truth is, is if there's something as a trustee that you need and you don't see it in this resource guide, if you just send me an email or have your library director send me an email and let me know what it is you're looking for, we'll create that for you so that you don't have to do that work. We realize that you are very valuable volunteers and um, your time is of the essence. So we try to help you out with that. Um, the system plan for CKLS is your roadmap to maximizing the amount of money you receive from CKLS each year. 
and it also helps you maximize using the CKLS services. You can always find the most current system plan on the actual CKLS website. Um, let me come back up here. This CKLS trustee resource guide is very handy. I just updated it this fall. If we look at the um, table of contents, you can see there's information on how to run a board, um, things that board members sometimes do that mess up the board, uh, golden rules, an evaluation for the board to know if they're really doing the best job that they can be. Um, what does your library director need to know before they're ever even hired for the job? It used to be 10 years ago, we had library directors were being hired and they hadn't used computers. Now your library director needs to be able to hit the ground running and solid tech skills are crucial. Roles and responsibilities here is one of the most important sections and the comparison of responsibilities. Um, when I'm called into a board meeting, it's often because there are problems, and most often I find that it's either um, a misunderstanding or a miscommunication that creates a problem. The um, misunderstanding will come into play most often if people don't know what they're responsible for doing and what is someone else's responsibility to do. A board member cannot be the library director. They just don't have the time to do it. If they're doing part of the library director's job, they're probably not doing all the things they need to be doing as trustees. Um, again, a big section on trustee orientation. This is information that you can just hand directly to those new trustees, have them read that through and ask questions at your next board meeting. Meeting management, how to run a meeting, um, one of the things that's not in this section is Robert's Rules for Small Boards, and that is something that we are going to be adding soon. We are going to, I think it's going already happening now this week, um, we just purchased some cheat sheets on Robert's Rules on how to run board meetings, and we've laminated those. They're um, this color, this goldenrod color. I don't know if you can see that, that yellowy color. And those are going to be going out on the career one per library. Um, have your director just keep that stuff with the board book. And that way it's right there when you need it to help your board run the meeting according to Robert's rules. Oh, oops, Patty has her computer set up a little differently. Let me. Oh, goodness. Lots of stuff. Um, okay. I don't want to go back. Sorry. This is not my computer, and now I can't see. Patty, I need your help. I want to click the back arrow, but I don't see a back arrow. Oh, you're you're in full screen mode. Okay. Do you want to go back to the uh, trustee page? Yes. It's right next, just to the left of the tab, just to the left of the one that's open. Okay. So but I've gonna, got... Going to pull this down. Pull this down? Okay. Okay. I've got it. There we go. Thank you. Okay. After that, um, there are a lot of tools here, like I said, to help make your job easier as a trustee. Um, when do you get your money from CKLS? When do you get your money from the city or where, when are you supposed to get your money from the city? It's not just when the clerk thinks it's time to send it to you. Those things are defined in statute. And some of these documents help you navigate that tricky part of um, being a trustee. One of the things that CKLS does that I think is very um, valuable to library boards is we will do a policy audit for you. And that is when you contact me and you'll have your director send me electronic copies of all of your policies. And I will go through those and um, I will leave comments. If you don't have a policy, I will um, 
pull together several and give you choices of which ones would be good for you to adopt. We also do a bylaws audit and we will take a good look at the library bylaws and um, help you make and craft a bylaws that is gonna be really great. Now, policies are what the board um, approves to help the library director run the library. The bylaws are what govern the board and help the board do what they need to do to run the library. Two very different roles and two very different tools. If you go into executive session, you need to know and state in your minutes exactly why we're going into executive session. We created this really cheesy but, but simple tool to help you fill it out so that you know that you're always going into executive session and you're doing it the right way. That's important because library boards are subject to the Kansas Open Meetings Act. Another good thing is um, when forms must be submitted and that lets you know, um, well, when forms need to be submitted actually, there are certain things that need to be submitted throughout the year, certain things that are done once a year and that document helps you um, know when everything needs to happen. And that makes it a lot easier for you. Just, I don't like this computer. I should have brought my own, but that's okay. Over here is some information on running your board meeting. Here's the tips on Robert's rules for small board. Here's one tip sheet and then um, a procedure manual to library policy. And there's my smiling face. Um, I think that the meat of this trustee training resources guide here is what you're gonna find up in these tabs around along the top. This is the library board evaluation. We actually did this as a um, trustee training. I think it was last year. And this is everything you need to know how to do that. Um, this one, hiring a library director, is a very popular with those boards that are in the position of having lost a library director and have to um, figure out how they're going to get a new director. This information will also help you if you're just looking to hire library staff. It just walks you through step by step. But that also includes library director um, job descriptions which is real nice. Sometimes charter ordinances need to be passed. And, um, oh, I see two spelling mistakes on there. I'm gonna fix that. Um, those are charter ordinances there. Everything you need to know about budget is here, including videos that are handy. Um, if you have questions about library budget, you're gonna wanna talk to me or to Liz Duclo, our general consultant. Library law is here. Um, now, trustees should be familiar with Kansas library law. Um, the way that I prefer uh, to say that is that they need to know where to go find out about Kansas library law. And if they have questions about Kansas library law, they're certainly gonna come to CKLS and we're gonna be able to give you the answer and save you the time on that. But library boards are subject to Kansas law, to Kansas Open Meetings Act, Kansas Open Records Act. Um, and we have our own set of laws under Kansas statutes annotated 12-1220. That's all about founding a library, things like that. Um, the training videos here is a wealth of information for you as a trustee. The CKLS system plan does require that a quorum of the library board attend trustee training every year. And when you do that, the least amount of money that the board earns for the library is $600 now. That's a lot of money. Um, we have trustee training videos here that are as short as five to 10 minutes. This is eight minutes and 11 seconds. This one is 10 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, just all different kinds of things. And so 
start talking to your fellow trustees now, librarians, start talking to your board members, get this taken care of early. Um, historically, one of the top reasons why libraries don't get all the money from CKLS is because the trustees don't all get to attend trustee training or not even a quorum of the board. Um, sometimes one person doesn't attend and the library loses $600. I don't know. Yes, I do. I don't know there's a single library who can afford to lose $600. That's a lot of money. So we wanna make sure that you get that money. I've got just a couple more minutes. Um, Andy, are you going to talk about this trustee verification form with them? Yeah, I noticed that uh, link is not the correct link. So, uh oh, we'll okay. Fix that. We'll... But yes, I'm going to show them that. Okay, then I think my time is just about finished. Do you have any questions before for me before I go? And I'm going to head back to Great Bend now and hopefully not hit any storms. You can type in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. There we go. Okay, thank you, gentlemen, take it away. Did you wanna go next, Michael? Or was it me? Uh, uh, yeah, I can go next. Okay, whatever you wanna do. All right, I'm gonna get my uh, screen sharing pulled up here. Give me just a second. Okay, so I'm gonna show you all a uh, app that you can use and your patrons can use to access the library catalog from a mobile device. And this can be used for your, um, but for both Apple and Android devices. So you want to go to your app store and you want to search for Aspen Lida, that's A-S-P-E-N-L-I-D-A. -E that stands for the Aspen Library Discovery app. And it's the one that's got a grayish icon with the colored logo on it. The developer is Bywater Solutions. We can see it doesn't have great ratings, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because it's a fairly new app, and it does have a few bugs occasionally. The other bigger reason is because it's not quite as robust as some of the established library apps like Libby and Hoopla when it comes to discovering stuff. So if you're just browsing, it it's not quite as intuitive for that. Um, and that's why a lot of people have rated it lower. But I love using it. It's a great way to search your digital and physical collections in one place. And you can place things on hold. And you can manage your library account all from a mobile device. I'm going to go ahead and download the app. And naturally, it was going fast earlier, but not today. It wouldn't be Tech Week without something like this. OK, now we're going to go ahead and open the app. And the first thing that pops up is it's going to ask if it can use your location. The reason it's asking this, and it probably isn't showing up on the screen because it's a, a pop up on mine. Um, the reason it asks for your location is so it can find your nearest library. Your patrons can turn it on or they can leave it off. It doesn't really matter. It just makes it a bit easier to find their home library. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on for mine. Takes a couple seconds to load. And then it's going to ask us to choose our home library. So I'm going to select the library. Because I turned on the location, it knows my nearest libraries. And so CKLS and the Great Bend Public Library are both at the top. I'm going to select CKLS as my home library. And then it asks for my username or my library barcode and my password. As many of you know, we've got library cards that are a bit longer. They've got 14 digits. So you can type it in here manually. But if you look on the right side of your screen, there's a little thing that looks like a barcode inside brackets. If you tap on that, it's going to ask you if it can use your camera. 
and then you can use it to scan your library card and it enters the numbers for you. That makes it a little bit faster. Then you want to enter your password. This is going to be the password that you set up for the patron on their library account. If they don't know their password, then you can reset it for them through Pathfinder. And they can also reset it just below the sign in button. There's a forgot password button. However, in order to use that, they do have to have an email address on their account. So if somebody wants to use the app, I just recommend making sure they've got an email address on their library account. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And again, it takes a couple of seconds to load. The first thing when you, you see when you get logged in is what, what it calls the Discover screen. That's basically your home screen. And it's similar to when you walk into a library and you see physical displays around the library. That's kind of the idea here. You see different collections. We've got available now on Sunflower eLibrary, new fiction books, new nonfiction, and so on. If we scroll to the bottom, there's the option to load some more categories and we can see even more collections. And this is kind of the browse place where people can search through. And if they see a title that looks interesting, all they have to do is tap on the cover and it shows some more detailed information. Before we do that, though, I'm going to run a search. So if we scroll back up to the top of the page, a search bar appears. And I'm going to go ahead and type a search in there and hit Enter. The search by default is going to do just a keyword search, which means it's looking for the best match for whatever you typed in, author, title, and so on. And sometimes it usually works pretty well. It doesn't always. But if it doesn't get the results you want, at the top, you've got a few options to limit your search a bit more. One of them I want to point out is the middle one that says search within entire collection. If you tap on that, it gives you the option to select where you're searching. If I want to search only physical items, if I don't want to see any digital stuff, then I'm going to select the one that says available now and then update it. If I only want to see digital stuff, then I would select available online. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on available now and update that search. OK, so these are all items that have a physical item available. The blue filters button in the upper left, that gives us some really detailed options that we can really customize our search. And you can scroll through and see there's lots of different options. A couple of things that might be of interest, we do have AR interest level, AR reading level, and AR point value. So if somebody's a teacher or a student's looking for AR stuff, they can limit their search in that way. I'm going to go ahead and close that. If we scroll through these options, we can see next to, oops, I'm going to go back here. Next to each title, there's a few different formats. So for Children of Dune, we've got book. We also have e-audiobook, e-book, and Kindle. So you can see at a glance what different types of formats are available. I'm going to go ahead and tap on the top, uh, top search item. And we're going to see the detailed record here. When it loads in, it's got the format selected in gray. The format is the book. And we can see in green, it says it is on shelf. Now, when it says on shelf, it doesn't necessarily mean it's on the shelf at your home library. That just means it's on a shelf somewhere in the system. So we can tap on the green, where is it button. And that's going to show us the different libraries where this item's available right now. If we decide we want to place this on hold, we've got the blue place hold button. And let's see what that does. If we tap on that. We've got a couple of options. We can do the first available item or a specific item. Most of the time, I recommend that you just use the first available item because that's usually the best way to get the item the fastest. And then we have to select a pickup location. So if I tap there, I can actually choose to send this book to any of these libraries, and I can pick it up there. Because remember, I've got a, a Pathfinder Central card, so I can check out from any library. I'm just going to select the nearest library which is the Great Bend Public Library. And once I've got that selected, I can tap on Place Hold. And we get a message that says that it was successful. 
if I want to look at some, some of the digital formats, I can tap on the e audiobook and we can see this one is checked out and it tells us there's four different copies available, but 40 people are on the waiting list. So it's going to be a while for this one, but we can place a hold in Libby by tapping on the blue button and the same thing for the ebook and for the Kindle. Okay. Now that we've looked at how to find that stuff, I want to show you the menu at the very bottom of the screen. There's four different options down there. Right now we're on the Discover. If we go to Card, that shows us a digital scannable library card. The idea behind this is that you wouldn't have to necessarily carry your physical card anymore, but you could use your phone as your library card. Unfortunately, this does require a newer type of barcode scanner um, that most of our libraries don't have so it's probably not going to be very useful for a lot of you unless you decide to buy one of those scanners next to the card we have account at the bottom menu if we tap on that it brings in a sliding menu that gives us some more info and this is kind of where your patrons can manage their account up at the top in blue we have a message that's on the patrons account so they can see that there beneath that we've got the checked out titles if we tap on the checkouts, we can see we've got two items that are marked in red. Those are overdue. And then below that, we've got two items that are just regular and they're not overdue yet. If your library doesn't have automatic renewals, you can renew all of your items in one click at the top of the screen. Or if you tap on an individual title, then you get the pop-up menu that allows you to renew this single title. All right, I'm going to go back to the account screen by tapping on account again. We also see we've got three items on hold right now. If I look at those, it's divided into two. We've got the holds that are ready to be picked up. Those are the ones that they can go into the library and check out right now. And then we've got three holds that are pending, which means they're not quite at the library yet. They're somewhere in the process. If we tap on one of those titles that's pending, we do have a few options to manage the hold. We can cancel the hold or we can freeze it. Freezing it just means the hold stays on our account and we stay keep our place in line, but we don't quite fill it yet. And so other people could check it out. And when we're ready to check it out, we can unfreeze it. And then we get the item um, filled for our hold. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel this hold because I don't need that book anymore. And it's just that easy. If we look at the account again, we also have saved searches. We've got lists. We do have reading history there. I know a lot of patrons like to look at their reading history. By default, for most patrons, this is not going to be saved. But if they log into the app, we can see at the top of the screen, there's a big blue button that says, start recording my reading history. This is where they can turn it on for themselves. And now that I've turned it on, it shows me, here's the items that I've checked out. It doesn't go back and show items they checked out in the past, but it does show stuff they have checked out right now and then in the future. And then finally, if I go to the account screen one more time, we do see, we can see the total number of fines there. It doesn't show fine details yet. That's a functionality that I hope is coming soon, but they can see if they have any total fines. And the last thing I want to show you in the bottom menu, if you go to more on the bottom right, we can tap on the blue button to see more information about our home library. And this shows the library's name. It shows us the address and phone number. It also shows us in green the, the open hours today. So it says open until 4 p.m. It gives us a little map. We do have the option to call the library. We can visit the library, which will open one of our map applications. And we can visit the website. It shows us the detailed hours for each day of the week, and libraries can add additional information about their library. I know that was really fast and uh, kind of um, a lot to digest, but that's that's a, just a quick overview of the, the app. And um, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about that.
the app is available for all Pathfinder libraries. It doesn't have to be turned on. It's already turned on, but libraries can choose to customize things like their library image, their um, collections that show on the homepage and all of that. And you can contact me if you want to customize yours. Give just a few seconds here for in case anyone has any questions. All right. There are all also some a uh, couple of training videos that go over this same information on our YouTube page. So you can share that with your patrons or check it out anytime to watch at your own pace if you need to. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. We'll go over uh, the YouTube channel and show you where that information's at here in just a bit. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to show you um, the new uh, continuing education verification form. So if you go back to the Central Kansas Library System website, if you go to information and forms and reports and click on the CKLS CE training verification form, it'll bring you to, to the form here. And we tried to make this as simple as possible because what we're wanting to do now, instead of us entering all the information, we're wanting the librarian or the trustee to enter the information for when they attend a, a continuing education event. And it doesn't have to be a central Kansas library system event. It can be anything that you attend. And this is for both library staff and trustees. So the questions that it's going to ask you is for an email, and this is the send you an email for when that you verify that the, the form was submitted, the name of the attendee, the name of the person who attended, if they're library staff, which is a director or any other library staff or a trustee, which is the board, uh, what organization they attended for, so which public library, the date the event took place, name of the event and we've we have a link to uh the ckls year at a glance calendar so if you don't know don't remember exactly what the event name was you can you can find it and then copy and paste let's see and then so this is a question how much was spent attending an event um and we know in the past that it's been kind of complicated to keep track of how much money was spent of the CE, um, well, I don't remember what it's called, the CE grant. Um, so we're trying to see if we can incorporate this into our automatic uh, tallying of everything at the end of the year. So if you if you know how much you spent attending an event, go ahead and put that in here. And the last two questions are just a confirmation that that you're you have completed the form accurately. So what this is going to feed into is it's going to feed into um, our system grant questionnaire tracker, which most librarians are probably aware of and, and use at the end of the year. So what we're doing now is we are feeding the information from the forms directly into this questionnaire tracker, and it's tallying how many CE events the uh, library staff has attended and how many CE events the uh, the boards have attended. And I'm trying to make it so that the the board quorum will show up. I know a lot of public, well, there's some public libraries who have less than five for a board quorum, depending on if they have, I don't remember, the uh, if they've changed the number of board members that they have. But here you can see uh, Bison has six, so they've met the standard already for this year to for the... Uh, library staff and it shows down here the events that they've attended and who attended the events do we have do i have anyone who would want to try to enter um try to fill out this form real quick and see if it because it should update live this will update live as as things are entered And if not, I can do one of Glenn Elder's, I could do Beth Hollings real quick and show you that it updates live. 
So hold on. Let me get Glenn Elder's email account. I'm assuming she's a trustee. She attended for the Glen Elder Library. The date, which is the 1st of May. Oh, it's five. The name of the event, which is what is what is it? Is tech for um, trustees? Tech tech tips for trustees, I believe. And say yes, I confirm. And I'm gonna put my name in. Um, because I'm filling it out for someone else, I'm gonna put my name in. If you fill it out for yourself, you can put your name in again here. And click submit. And unfortunately, you'll have to do these captures. I haven't figured out a way to make it so you don't have to do that, but it's pretty quick to do. So if we go to Glenn Elder now, I hit refresh. Of course, it's not going to work. It should work. Make sure it's in the questionnaire tracker and it should, and it is, so it should show up here. Well, I guess I haven't got that quite figured out yet. It was working earlier, but it should automatically update um, here and show that you've had one person, one trustee, um, attend a continuing education event and it'll total up um, how many people have, have done that and when you meet the, uh, the standard. Any questions on this? So this is this is live right now, right? So they can, yeah. they can start doing it this. Is live, yeah, the uh, the form is live. To get to the form again is to go to the home CKLS.org homepage, information, forms and reports, and the CKLS CE training verification form. Uh, we have it in a couple other places, but the one on the uh, the Trustee lib guides has not been updated yet, so don't use that one. Use the one that's that's under uh, forms and reports. So I don't see any questions about that stuff. Um, we are wanting each librarian and trustee to do it themselves, and each individual person needs to fill it out per event that they go to. So we're in the past, we had it so you could add multiple people to the to the one form, but that makes it very hard for us to count and automate the count. So it takes a lot of man hours to verify everything at the end of the year. Um, I know it's a little more work on your end, but it's it makes it so you can double check right away that, hey, this was recorded, it's counted, and you can know right away when you meet your your threshold to to meet the standards two and three. It makes it more accurate too. Yeah, removes human error. So I don't see any questions about that. I'm going to show you the uh, YouTube channel here real quick. So if you go to YouTube.com and you type in Central Kansas Library System, 
CKLS does have a YouTube channel, which has all our videos posted on it. So I think YouTube's a little more convenient to navigate than going through the LibGuides. So if you click on home, there's all the latest videos that have, have shown up. You can you can show the whole list of videos that we have, which is a lot, or you can go to playlists. And playlists has um, things that are grouped together. So trustee training playlist has 38 videos in it. People have given us their time. And you can see how many videos there are and you can go through and, and find which ones you might want to watch. Um, and I believe trustees can watch, can do any kind of continuing education, just like the librarian can. So if it's not, if you don't see something you're interested in there, you can find all kinds of other stuff that might be interesting to you to, for your uh, continuing education stuff. Any questions about that? Paula had asked if uh, for the CE verification, if they needed to go back and enter events before today. And uh, we did keep track of events up till now. Yeah. So we've gone back in and added those in. So you don't have to worry about adding stuff that happened before today. Yeah. And technically, I think we decided we're not going to um, make the switch over until the 6th of May. But if you want to do it today, you can do that. Um, because we, we know it's been a, it's going to be a big change. So everything that we've kept track of, we're going to enter for you. That's why there's some stuff that has, oh, let's see. There's some people who have, I know Bison had already met the, the CE standard for their librarian. And that's why there's already information in there. So, because we've already done it. Uh, no, the, the trustees can watch whatever training they want. The uh, standard is a quorum of the board has to attend a continuing education event. It doesn't, they don't have to be the same ones. Um, the thing is one per one board member can't watch six videos and meet the standard. It has to be at least whatever the quorum of your board is, number of people to meet the standard. Does that answer your question? Okay. I think that's all I have. Um, pretty quick. <laughs> okay. Anyone have any questions about anything that we covered today? Okay. Looks like we can let you go a little early today. Yeah. Well, thank you all for attending. Uh, stay safe if there's if you're having any storms tonight. And uh, tomorrow our session uh, tomorrow is Thursday, and our session starts at uh, one one thirty. And it's uh, Google Forms. We're going to show you how to uh, make a Google Form for Summer Library Program, and we're going to show some of the same kind of stuff that we did tonight, or that I did tonight for the librarians. And then Friday at 1.30, we have cool apps, which is, which is one of the fun ones where we show a lot of apps that, that you might be interested in. Some of them are library related, but they aren't always. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing you all the rest of the week and hope you all have a great evening. All right, I think we can stop recording and